Uh, good evening, everybody. Mm, this is working, I guess. Yeah. Okay, I want to tell you a bit about Africa, technology, how, what we've experienced, what we've been involved with, and so on. Should be interesting. Okay, uh, I'm the chairman of two companies in Ghana. Uh, one of them is called Soft Tribe, one of them is called Black Star Line. Uh, Soft Tribe is a software company which I set up after I finished college and moved to Ghana with uh, no money and uh, reluctant parents who didn't want me in Ghana. Uh, at least they left my bedroom for me. I, stud I studied manufacturing and um, I thought I wanted to work in the private sector. I wanted to run my own business and um, I couldn't afford a, a factory. And I realized I had a PC and it could make software and that was a factory. So that was my first spark. Now, we started, I started writing software and selling software cold turkey. In the old days, no internet, no mobile phones. So we, write, we look at an industry, we write programs, we go knocking on doors. Some people asked us to go to hell, and uh, others uh, allowed us in. And we made a success of it to some degree. Um, in doing this, we pioneered, um, we realized that there were specific needs that African uh, technology required. We pioneered something called um, tropical tolerance which meant uh, it was a concept where the design of our software would take into consideration our power difficulties, uh, te communication challenges, labor challenges, um, prices, pricing, because you know, people don't have money to buy software at the prices where people would buy abroad. And recently we've revamped it. We have Tropical Tolerance 2, which has added political risk. Like uh, Nicholas described, we've had experience of that too. So we have added that to our uh, stuff, which, which means that servers live in multiple countries, et cetera, et cetera, if you know what I mean. So nobody can be grabbed in one place. It's really real, it's not a joke. Now, a couple of significant events that happened. The internet came and it changed everything. It took a couple of years for us to figure out what was possible. Initially, we were using it for things like uh, my partner is doing work, and my business partner then will be doing work in northern Nigeria. And hello, Herman, mistake. There's a, there's a bug in the code. Oh my God. He has to take a, a bus to the airport from some village, to the city. And it takes two days for him to get to Ghana. It takes two seconds to fix the bug, and he's back to, to the clients. Um, after the internet uh, age arrived, same event. He's in Kenya. He's making a presentation. He calls me and says, Herman, we're in trouble. It's not loading. I think there's an error. I said, what is it? He repeats what the error is. I say, just, just hold off there. Is the internet on? Great. I compile and I send it to him. People are in the room, they don't even notice. And it's running. That's the difference the internet made to us. But that was just the beginning. Now, after a while, we started investigating other things we could do with the internet. Things like cloud computing and so on. But then, while this was happening, mobile phones were spreading. Very soon, the proliferation reached the villages, the cell sites everywhere. And for us, the, the light went out, the light went off. That look, 500 million potentially new Africans have just entered the market. These are people who, you know, my friends from uh, Europe when I first moved to Ghana used to tease me. They hey, you live in the black hole. I thought it was a racial slur, but I realized <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were quite right. There was no communication to most of Africa and it was so difficult to communicate. Suddenly, uh, with the advent of mobile phones, and the, the mobile phones in Africa also recently have this facility where everywhere there's mobile telephony. Uh, not only does SMS work, but to some degree, you can get an internet dongle to work. Now this changes everything. And we have 500 million new people, and we, we call them in our organization, we call them new victims. <laughs> but they are potential clients, and we can do, <laughs> we can do business with them, and so on. As soon as we found this out, we started thinking through it, and we came up with um, the new company called Black Star Line. That company is an e-commerce company. It's got shopafrica53.com and African Liberty Credit, which is kind of like an eBay slash Amazon.com slash Alibaba and a PayPal, <laughs> albeit Africanized, because uh, whereas you can, uh, in America, you can announce as eBay that, look, everybody load up your stuff, in Africa, nobody's going to be able to load it up. You have to actually NGO style go in the bush and have merchandisers and so on. 
So we've been doing this for the last three years. It's taken time. Uh, but essentially, I, I would expect by the end of the year latest, it should be seamless and it should be smooth. You should be able to sit here, uh, look on our website, have a payment system that is Africa friendly, yet international. We've designed everything. The other problem we had was the partners we're working with were caught pants down. They just didn't expect we would have the technology ready to say, hey, look here, how many of these can you make? Uh, what if uh, we hooked you up? We said, oh, whoa, 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 I can only make five. Well, you need to gear up your manufacturing. The Chinese can order five million. So get ready. Things like that. Even our, our financial partners, the banking partners, we've had to push them along to, to get them to where they can handle the kinds of volumes. And we don't want to make a mistake, huh? We're another uh, African casualty. So we'll take our time and do it properly. So it's taken three years, and I expect by the end of the year we'll be there. But what this has allowed us to do is that we, 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 I read somewhere that, you know, in places like America, the mom and pop shops do over 50% of the national revenue. It's not the IBMs and Microsofts. It's more the mom and pop shops. And Africa is full of those. Every West African is some kind of trader. They're doing some deal somehow. <laughs> so it comes naturally. So we're basically harnessing all those people and plugging them into the global trade. Now, I'll tell you about some of the merchants we have. We've had villages where the, 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 the chief has sent somebody to us and they've tidied up four huts for people in Europe to go, come and have their honeymoons in their villages. These are people who they had no, no hope you know, of making that kind of money. A, a thousand pounds will pass through the village in a, in a week, which was you know, unthinkable, unthinkable before. Um, also other things, um, suddenly young people who are in journalism are setting up streaming TV stations on our web mall, right? Suddenly them and BBC, no difference, international footprint, international footprint. In fact, they will charge subscription fees. They don't have to depend on government. <laughs> right? And then other things like people sitting here uh, who traditionally would wire money to Africa, suddenly because of our system, you'll be able to pay your bills in the diaspora and pay your bills without sending your money to Kojo, who has a drink down the road, instead of paying the bills for your grandmother's house. <laughs> so things like that are coming. The, the trick we have discovered is we meet Africa where it is. We don't try to go and invent anything. What exists is enough. We, we have SMS into the bush. We have internet in the cities. It, just those two things. We have software development capability. We can innovate around that. I, I agree. Other things will come. Maybe the, the quality of uh, internet connectivity in the villages will improve, but it's all right. What exists can do international trade. Um, I kind of hate, to some degree, one ton dependence and reliance on aid. So forgive me. OK, now, um, you notice that what we've described does not involve the government, which, which is very important, because a lot of businesses are impeded by the big men in the cities who, for the Africans here, you know what I mean. <laughs> right? Now, so this is what we're doing with the, on the trade side and the e-commerce side. <clears throat> On the payroll side, on the, on the software side, that has been affected also <clears throat> by, um, by, um, by these new technologies. I'll give you an example. Um, the platform we designed to handle the payments, we found on the side, because of the delays we've had with some of the partners, we've had to come up with all kinds of new ideas, fascinating things that, that we're doing in, in that regard. Um, the, the, the scratch cards we're using for payments, we started building we designed a product around those scratch cards uh, such that the last international trade fair that occurred in, in, in Ghana was run on our systems. These people had been losing 70% of their money at the gate in, in the ticketing. We came up with a card which is essentially an African version of the Oyster card. I would argue more sophisticated. <laughs> the, the technology is not in the card. The technology is server side. So whereas, because if you use an Oyster card in Africa, the heat and people, you know, keeping them in all kinds of places and so on, <laughs> it won't last two days. So, <laughs> so we were able to design a, a simple plastic card where the technology lived on our servers. And our servers are in cyberspace, remember? So during an event, nobody can steal the machine, wasting their time. You have to be tropically tolerant. And uh, they made over 500 percent, 500 percent increase in revenue for that fair, 
There were no fights at the gate. They are over the moon. They are not going to have any more fairs without us. Because once you bought your, 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 your little plastic card, you go to the gate, what do you meet? Not a human being, a scanner. And you can't bribe a scanner. It doesn't work. Let me see. So they're very excited. And uh, just to let you know what this, these, these technologies make possible in, in Africa, the, the whole time, the, the, the management of the Trade Fair Authority, they sat upstairs. Normally, they're downstairs fighting with everybody. This time, they sat upstairs, and we gave them a link, and then plugged into our servers, and we just went gate one, gate two, gate three, gate four, gate five, and just watching the numbers live. Hi, Herman. There's 5,000 dollars, 5,000 CDs in the box. Yeah, could you bring it up? Because they could see live what was happening, monitoring the gates, know how much money is in the till, and so on. And uh, what I'm pr most proud of in, in that regard is that uh, this whole technology we put in, in place, they didn't, they didn't have to go and suffer the indignity of uh, asking the government to borrow on their behalf from the World Bank. We did a revenue split with them. Local technology, revenue split. I think this is the way forward. The aid game has to die. Now, how long more? Two minutes, okay, very quickly. Other products that we're, we're working on, just, just to give you an idea of how excited we are and the kinds of things that are coming up. We, have, uh, we just signed an agreement with a, a bunch of insurance companies. We're coming up with a micro-insurance product where, you know, scratch card, insurance, that's all I'm saying. It's not out yet. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a deal with one of the international, um, one of the international accounting firms. Um, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, companies in, in West Africa need efficient payroll systems. These things are expensive. They can't afford them. Even governments need them. They can't afford them. We had the leading payroll product. We stopped, went back to the lab, given the existence of the internet and the cloud technology, went back to the lab, redesigned the product. Guess what? It's now virtually free. Why? Works for everybody. We hooked up with a bank which says, if you move your account, if, if the workers of any company would move their accounts to us, we will pay for the accounting firm and soft tribe to process your payroll. So suddenly, any company can afford world-class payroll, which we used to sell to the Unilever, government of Ghana, and so on. Now you and your five workers, no problem. Move the accounts to that bank, we run it every month, we just, we just receive an email from an international accounting firm with all the pay slips and all the reports. By the way, all these things I'm describing, they don't live in one country. SMSs don't have a border, and emails don't have a border. So we are uniting and removing the artificial borders with technology. Now, I'm going to try and end. Um, I think we have a very bright future. <coughs> Sorry, given these technologies, we have a very bright future. We are very excited. We think we're going to be very rich. We're going to carry a lot of people with us. <coughs> and we don't, we don't think we're confused. Right? And, uh, you know, Africa will get its dignity back. And uh, we will not have uh, all these, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them are these aid organizations that are giving us a warm place to sleep and then taking over our resources, which is far mm, pimping, really. Thank you. <laughs>